Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respective obeisances on to you. Please take over the call, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Omiyanti Miranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chak Sulundalitam Yana Tasma Shri Gurvena Maha. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Viramta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Sadaswari Devi Gongravani Pachari Nanya Vishesa Sunya Vari Masyatya Satarine. Pancha Kalpa, the Rubis Jack, Riba Sindhu, Pacha Patitanam, Pavane Bio, Vaishnava, Bhyana Mahana Maha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakti Rindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, please post the verse. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Maharaj, screen is a little slow. Give me one minute. Mataji, Shamagori Mataji, my computer is a little slow. Okay, so this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 5, Verses 21 and 22. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhuteshu Vidru Virudya. Bhuteshu Vidrubya Uttamam Ye. Saris Prisateshu Sabodhanistaha. Tato Manusha Pamatas Tato Pi. Kandarva Siddha Vibhu Daluga Ye Devasure Bhyo Magavat Pradana Daksha Dayo Brahma Sutas Tutesham Bhava Parasota Venicha Virya Satmat Paroham Dvija Deva Devaha Translation. Of the two energy manifested, spirit and dull matter, beings possessing living force, that is, vegetables, grass, trees, and plants, are superior to dull matter, stone and earth. Superior to non-moving plants and vegetables are worms and snakes, which can move. Superior to worms and snakes are animals that have developed intelligence. Superior to animals are human beings. Superior to human beings are ghosts because they have no material bodies. Superior to ghosts are the Gandharvas and superior to them are the Siddhas. Superior to the Siddhas are the Kinaras and superior to them are the Asuras. Superior to the Asuras are the demigods and of the demigods enter, the king of heaven is supreme. Superior to Indra are the sons of Lord Brahma, sons like King Daksha. And superior among Brahma's sons is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is the son of Lord Brahma. Brahma is considered superior. But Brahma is subordinate to me, the supreme personality of Godhead. Because I am inclined to the Brahmins, the best of all. The Brahmins are the best of all. <clears throat> Purport. In this verse, the Brahmins are given a position superior to that of the Supreme Lord. The idea is that the government should be conducted under the guidance of the Ramanas. 
Although Rishab Dev recommended his eldest son, Bart, as emperor of the world, he still had to allow the instructions of the Brahmins in order to govern the world perfectly. The Lord is worshipped by Brahmanya Deva. The Lord is very fine of Brahma devotees or Brahmanas. This does not refer to so-called caste Brahmanas, but to qualified Brahmanas. A Brahmana should be qualified with the eight qualities mentioned in verse 24, such as Shama, Dhamma, Satyan, Titiksha. The Brahman should always be worshipped and under their guidance, the ruler should discharge his duty and rule the citizens. Unfortunately, in this age of Kali, the executive is not selected by very intelligent people, nor is he guided by qualified Brahmanas. Consequently, chaos results. The mass of people should be educated in Krishna consciousness so that according to the democratic, democratic process, they can select a first-class devotee like Bart Maharaj to head the government. If the head of the, head of the state is head if the head of the state is headed by qualified Brahmas, everything is completely perfect. In this verse, the evolutionary process is indirectly mentioned. The modern theory that life evolves from matter to some extent supported in this verse because it is stated, Uteshu viru that is the living entities evolve all from vegetables, grass, plants, and trees, which are superior to dull matter. In other words, matter also has the potency to manifest living entities in the form of vegetables. In the sense, life comes out of matter, but matter also comes out of life. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, aham sarvasya pravavo matat sarvam pravartate. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. There are two energies, material and spiritual, and both originally come from Krishna. Krishna is the supreme living being, although it may be said that in the material world, a living force is generated from matter, it must be admitted that originally matter is generated from the supreme living being. Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam from the Kata Upanishads 2 to 13. The conclusion is that everything, both material and spiritual, is generated from the Supreme Being. From the evolutionary point of view, perfection is reached when the living entity attains the platform of a Brahmana. A Brahmana is a worshiper of the Supreme Brahman and the Supreme Brahman worships the Brahmanas. In other words, the devotee is subordinate to the Supreme Lord and the Lord is inclined to see to the satisfaction of his devotee. A Brahman is called Dvija Deva and the Lord is called Dvija Deva Deva. He is the Lord of the Brahmanas. The evolutionary process is also explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 19, where it is said that there are two types of living entities, moving and non-moving. That is Stanu and Jyangya. It's a Sanskrit term. Stanu means non-moving and Jyangya means moving. Among moving entities, there are birds, bees, aquatics, human beings, and so on. Of these, the human beings are supposed to be the best, but they are few. Of these small number of human beings, there are many so class, so many low-class human beings like Malechas, Hulindas, Baldas, and Sambaras. The human being elevated enough to accept the Vedic principle is superior. Among those who accept the Vedic principles, generally known as Vanashram, presently known as the Hindu system, very few actually follow these principles. Of those who actually follow the principles, most perform food of activity or pious activity for elevation to a higher position. Manusanam sahasreshu kaschidyatata siddhyaye. 
Of the many attached to food of activity, one may be a jnani, that is, one philosophically inclined and superior to the karmis. Yatatam api siddhanam kaschit main veti tattvataha. Out of the many jnanis, one may be liberated from material bondage. And out of the many millions of liberated jnanis, one may become a devotee of Krishna. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Leave the verse on, please. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadhi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <laughs> so not, not the Sanskrit. <laughs> we have no use for that right now. Leave the translation up or part of the verb or anything. Yeah. <clears throat> so here we see <clears throat> many points are being made. The gradations of living entities coming from the basic all the way up to the, the highest, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this gradation is done by movement, by intelligent, and by uh, relationship. <clears throat> we can see the human beings are in the middle there somewhere. <laughs> so we're not so advanced <laughs> compared to other living beings, such as Gandharva, Siddhas, Asuras, they were more advanced, the Siddhas, Ganaras and demigods, and of course, the different levels of the devas, the different personalities that will appear as uh, subordinate to the devas, but are coming from the devas. We have Lord Shiva, and then ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the sunam bonam, the utmost principle of existence and the source of all existence. But here, Rishabh David says, out of all, and he speaks himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which he is, but he says the Brahmins are the best of all. So, but again, before we get into the nature of the Brahmins' qualifications, which are glorious, that is, if they follow Brahminical culture, a Brahmin is not one that is born simply in a Brahminical family, a Brahman is one who qualifies himself by Brahminical activities, which are patan patan yajan yajan dana pratigraha, to know the Vedas, and to teach the Vedas, to worship the deity form of the Lord, and to also instruct others in that same worship, and to give in charity and accept charitable gifts. These are the six activities of the Brahminical culture, Brahminical personalities. So unless one is actually performing these activities, he is designated according to the activities he's performed and not according to his birth. And we see that people are very proud of their birth. They wear Brahmin threads, but they don't do Brahminical activities. So they're Brahma Bandhu. They're fallen from their position Actually, they never attained the position because in order to attain to a Brahminical position, one has to perform the activities. And also here we find what is the Brahmin service to others as they are advisors. Um, we see throughout the scriptures, just like we, we saw Lord Ramachandra when he was, after he returned to Ayodhya, he had a set of Brahmanas who he would get advice from in order to rule the kingdom. Being in the role of the Kshatriya, he was the Supreme Lord himself, but <clears throat> he followed the Brahminical culture. He followed the Vanashram culture, where one in a ruling position gets advice and direction from the saintly persons. They are called, these kings are called Rajarsis. <clears throat> they have saintly understanding because they receive this knowledge from the, the Brahmanas. So uh, 
a Brahman is not one by birth, but by qualification and by activity. Yeah. And then that qualifies. But again, <clears throat> there is another principle here that is not being mentioned so much. And that is, we find it a lot in Srila Prabhupada's other purports and, a lot, and much in his instructions that one engage in devotional services above all the varnas, Brahma, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra. In other words, Brahmin, uh, a Vaishnava is better than the Brahmin because a Vaishnava <coughs> is actually engaged in transcendental activities which are above the three modes of material nature. They qualify themselves as being Brahmins also by their activities, but because they're engaged in loving service to the Supreme Lord, they're in a position <clears throat> above the three modes of material. In other words, they're on the spiritual platform. Mamcha Yogya Bicharena Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunam Samatitya Namatam Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate. The one who engages in full devotional service who does not fall down under any circumstance and once transcends the modes of material nature <clears throat> and comes to the level of Brahman. So Brahman platform is actually the platform of transcendence, which is superior to Brahmanas <clears throat> in the sense that uh, a Brahman is a person who is uh, uh, in the mode of goodness, and that is the highest within the material energy. But still, unless they take to transcendence, when Brahmins actually engage in devotional service, they are the best of all personalities like that. But we see, even throughout the scriptures, that those persons who, even though they weren't fully engaged in devotional service, they were given advice to saintly kings because they were well-versed in the Shastras. They had that knowledge like that. So this this particular uh, discussion here centers around the principle of direction. Nowadays, people don't people in superior positions or leadership positions have a tendency not to take advice from others. And if they do take advice from others, they generally do not follow that advice, or if they decide to follow it. They do it because they like it. If they don't like it, they don't follow it. We had the example of, of King Ravana. Ravana was, a, was actually a Brahmana. At least his father, his father was Vishrava, a, a, a Brahmana. And he also had knowledge of the Vedas. And he also had his Brahminical advisors, ministers. But when he would ask them for advice, he would accept or not accept based on whether he found it pleasing to his own ideas or not. But then again, that is second class. First, the fact that he asked or accepted, it was one of his good qualities. But the fact that he didn't follow, or he followed when he wanted to follow, <clears throat> That was his downfall because his Brahmins gave him so many advice. You know, you are taking the wife of another person and therefore you should return it. You have so much to lose if you do not. But he could not uh, hear because of his attachment to his own uh, uh, lusty desires. But a one who, what we see, Lord Ramo, though he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he always took advice from Vishishta Muni when he was uh, in power, his father also, Dasarat. And we have the, many of the great kings throughout history. We have another example of King Vena. King Vena was a very powerful king. And uh, he was born in a very good family, unfortunately. His uh, mother was a demon, and his father was a great soul. Um, and he developed a characteristics of a lowborn 
person, he developed demonic, demoniac qualities. And therefore he tried to out, oust the Brahmin caste by getting rid of them. But they kept giving him advice, knowing that their, their service was to advise the king, despite the fact that he was not taking advice. They continued to try, uh, hoping that he would eventually come to his senses, but he actually went the other way. He actually, he said he actually dispensed the Brahmins from their service and no longer took their need. But the Brahmins were so powerful that they actually started chanting mantras and the power of their mantras was so powerful that they actually killed King Venu by their mantras. Uh, a real Brahmin is very powerful. A Brahmin can chant mantras and it becomes a weapon to destroy someone. They don't use that power because they are saintly by nature, but it is available. So Brahmins are very powerful. Therefore, when we engage in devotional service, we are connecting to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the source of all, all qualities on all levels of existence. So devotees also become very powerful because they are connected with the all-powerful Supreme Personality of Godhead. Devotees don't use their power in the wrong way. They use their power in devotional service because they are saintly by nature. We see in the, the example is how book distribution has flourished around the world. Uh, so many hundreds and millions of books have gone out in such a short time. Millions and millions of because devotees are empowered by the Lord to convince people to take these, this literature. That power is a Shakti. And that Shakti comes from the Lord himself. And it's given to the devotees by their connection with the Lord in devotional service. Like that. So a devotee, even whatever service you are doing, you're empowered to do it by the Lord. And therefore, there's no limit to the quality and the quantity you can perform in devotional service because spirit is never limited. Although we sometimes limit ourselves due to seeing ourselves in that position. But the devotee can uh, access more and more of the mercy of the Lord and perform amazing activities on behalf of the Lord. There's one particular purport in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in the sixth canto, 19th chapter, I believe it's verse number five, that the Lord appears in the dreams of his devotees and empowers the devotees by giving them a service to perform, such as build me a temple, or I'm a deity and I'm buried here. Please come and find me and bring me out and worship me. Uh, and so many other things that the Lord communicates to his devotees and he empowers them with his Shakti to do the work after communicating the service that he wants done like that. And Prabhupada you know, was like that. We see how when Prabhupada had his second heart attack coming over on the boat, the Lord personally intervened and gave Prabhupada assurance that I'm taking care of this boat ride. I will take you across. And Prabhupada took uh, assurance and what we say, happiness and hearing the Lord had appeared to him in the dream, showing him that he was in control and that there was nothing that he should be concerned about. And so this is how the Lord works. He, empowers his devotees to do wonderful things on his behalf. So this is the power of devotional service. Um, and therefore we should not limit ourselves to what we can do or what we can do, as long as it's in line with the instructions of the spiritual master and in line with the will of the Lord like that. For instance, um, 
sometimes people, we look and we see that, oh, the world is just so full of demons. Mm -hmm. As the modes of in, uh, ignorance and passion increase, sinful activities also increase. And as sinful activities increase, the population becomes more demoniac. As the population becomes more demoniac, there is difficulties on all levels of existence and people are never happy. We have such a situation going on today. And the devotees become a little bit less uh, enthusiastic and sometimes feel depressed by these situations. But actually these, are, these have nothing to do with the devotees because these are opportunities for preaching. There's opportunities for expanding Krishna consciousness. There are opportunities to grow in our own spiritual life. So the material energy doesn't affect the devotee when the devotee is, stays fixed in devotional service and takes shelter of Krishna in all situations. That is the success of our Krishna consciousness. And therefore, um, although the situation may appear to be very degraded and bleak from a material point of view, uh, we understand that Lord Chaitanya is conducting this movement and he's moving this world towards uh, Krishna consciousness more and more, as long as the devotees remain sincere. The devotees remain sincere and become, stay strong in their sadhana, especially their chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra reading Srila Prabhupada's books and associating with, with each other, inspiring each other in devotional service and performing activities which are meant to expand the message of Lord Chaitanya around the world, then this movement will only spread more and more and more. Material is subordinate to spiritual. Material cannot touch spiritual. Uh, for example, just like we are, we are spiritual beings. We are, we are spiritual beings in a human experience or within the material world. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. That is not our understanding. We are spiritual, but we are in the material world. But we don't touch the material world. Our souls remain aloof from all matter because spirit and matter do not mix. But because of the mind, the mind identifies with the body and the false ego. And the false ego gives directions according to the, the desire of the mind in order to enjoy. And therefore we cover ourselves with the material energy and we see ourselves more in connected with the material energy than our spiritual uh, identification and that is also that is called maya or illusion we never touch the material energy we never will touch the material energy but through a consciousness just like when you take when you go to sleep at night you dream and in the dream you're having an experience but when you wake up you know it's just a dream and you kind of just go on with your regular activities you don't give much importance to the dream. So the soul, although in the material world, doesn't touch the material world, this material world is like a dream state that's happening all around us. <laughs> but it becomes a reality only when we engage in devotion and service to the Lord like that. And so therefore, the connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is through devotion and service like that. And the brahmanas are meant to lead the rest of the society by giving brahminical direction, that is shastric direction, and creating a society where people can live according to uh, the direction given by the Lord himself. And that is to live uh, based on religious principles and to live according to the needs that one has and not beyond. Okay, so I'll stop here. And this is a very interesting verse. You can, if you go back over to the translation, you'll see the different levels of human, different levels of living beings and how one is superior to the other. 
Uh, it's kind of interesting how it's explained. Okay. We'll stop there. Thank you, Maharaj, for the beautiful class. Thank you so much. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions and realizations, please go back. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you very much Maharaj. This is Sureshwar Sham from Charlotte, North Carolina. Maharaj, uh, one uh, here it said that uh, Lord Shiva is below Brahma. No, he's the son of Brahma. He, 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 he comes from the body of Brahma. That's mentioned in the third canto, where he appears from the body of Brahma, but he is not below Brahma. When Brahma became angry at the four Kumaras, he withheld his anger. And in that withholding of the anger, Rudra appeared from his forehead and that was the appearance of Lord Shiva. So it, it says it's in relationship to the appearance only, but Ultimately, Lord Shiva is superior because he has 84% of the qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, where Lord Brahma has only 78% of those qualities. Okay, okay. Okay, well, Maharaj, once, uh, I would like to understand it a little better. Is, it says, uh, since Lord Shiva is son of Lord Brahma, Brahma is considered superior. superior. But, uh, so what you are saying, Maharaj, is uh, Lord Shiva is born, is son of Brahma. He appears from, he appears as the son of Lord Brahma, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah. Maharaj, yeah. Yeah, Maharaj, yeah, so the, the understanding is that uh, Brahma is the supreme head of the universe. And therefore, he is the person that conducts all the affairs of the, of the universe and the demigods are under his subordination. Okay, okay. So Maharaj, one more thing here. Uh, initially you mentioned one thing, Maharaj, this classification was done as per uh, movement, right? You mentioned three points, Maharaj. They didn't catch all of them. What was that, what was that point related to? Yeah, initially you said this uh, classification of the, the classification of these uh, uh, entities that is mentioned is as per mm -hmm. movement, movement and something else you mentioned. Mark. Yeah, movement, uh, intelligence, intelligence and relationship. Okay, okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Movement, intelligence. And yeah, okay, one, one more thing, Maharaj. Uh, thank you for that. And Maharaj, one more thing. One thing, uh, these Asuras, right? Uh, how they can be like superior to these uh, Gandharvas, Siddhas and Kenaras, like, you know? Well, there's a planet outside of the Earth planet. There's the planet of the Asuras. The Asuras are, they're materially very powerful. What well, that way, materially, okay. No, yeah, they're always causing problems. <laughs> you know, just like the Rakshashas. Well, they're, they're not Asuras. They're, they're another brand. But Asuras are a particular type of living entity. <laughs> They're, they can, they're powerful, materially powerful. There's nothing spiritual about them, materially powerful. The Kinaris and the Siddhas are also powerful, but they're also materially powerful. So this is this whole gradation you're having here is all based on the material echelon. Okay, so one more thing, Maharaj. Here, can we assume that uh, the word Brahmana mentioned here is synonymous with Vaishnava? Um, not synonymous, no. No, Vaishnava means one who is engaged in devotional service. A Brahmana is a person in the mode of goodness who performs Brahminical activities. Okay. So a Vaishnava, because they're engaged in devotional service, is superior to the Brahmanas. That was brought out in a discussion by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. When he, uh, there's a book 
he wrote called Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. Uh, that book is available in ISKCON, you know, libraries, you can find it. And it was a compilation of his writings, which later he presented in a debate against the Brahmanas, showing that the Brahmanas are glorious, but the Vaishnavas are even more so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for these few clarifications on this verse. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Well, one point you should understand is that Prabhupada wanted devotees to be trained in Brahminical culture. So he, he, he executed or authorized training based on Brahminical qualities. And so devotees were trained to become Brahmanas. I mean, developing Brahminical qualities, but engaging in devotional service. That is called Daivi Vanarshram. But now, as our society has evolved, we are also seeing the need to train people in the other varnas also, Kshatriya and Vaishya. Sutras don't need training. But these two also require training and then, of course, engagement in devotional service. That's Prabhupada's mission to establish these Vanarshram in a spiritual way, not in a material way. Vanarshram itself is material. But when, in, when those persons who are have these inclinations according to the different varnas, whether they're Brahmins, Kshatriyas, or Vaishyas, and then they engage that in devotional service, they, that is called spiritual Vanarshram, which is superior to material Vanarshram. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I just had a, just a, a question to follow up on your answer just a few moments ago to Prabhuji. Um, can you tell us what are the differences between the Rakshashas and the Asuras? <laughs> well, there's... Um, um, They're just gradations of different, just like you have gradations of demigods. You have the Siddhas, Chinaras, Ganaras, uh, the, uh, what else? Some of the other ones, there are, there are a whole list of different types of demigods, different kinds. So there's also a whole list of different types of Vishuras. There's Yakshas, Rakshashas, Pinat, Pisashas, uh, jinns, <laughs> different kinds of evil beings that are situated below the earth or around the earth like that. Well, they're just different, just like there's different demigods, just like there's different kinds of human beings. We have the white race, the, white, the black race, we have the yellow race, red race, brown race. So they're all human beings but different races, races, different cultures. With, within the category of Asuras, there's also different kinds of Asuras. Mm -hmm. Some are superior than others. Mm -hmm. so. And you mentioned that the Asuras, um, have, they're on a separate planet. Is that the same for the Rakshashas as well? Or? Well, Asuras is more of a general category. There are different kinds of asuras. Um, I think this re refers to the, when you read different verses, you see sometimes there's a general st statement applied to the word asura, and then when you get when you read other verses, you find it's more specific, like uh, demons. And then you, when you say demons, that's one class. And you say rakshasas, that's another class. Mm -hmm. When you say dijins, that's another. So it's just a matter of categorization based on different characteristics of these different demons. Mm -hmm. 
they're both they're either in the mode of passion or the mode of goodness or the mode of ignorance either one passion or ignorance okay. so yeah you if you want to read more about it you can do it just read uh the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a lot of statements there describing the different characteristics of the different higher beings and the different lower beings also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, a, there's such a variety, just like we, we hear, there's 400,000 forms of human life. So how many do we know? <laughs> I often wonder that question. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So that does include all of these different demigods and uh, lower lo living beings like that. And sometimes they have a physical body like we do and sometimes they have a different kind of body. Like the jinns. The jinns are an evil group of people and they have a body made out of of fire and air. Fire and air. They're, they don't have an earthly body or a watery body, it's just fire and air, that's all. Just don't try to meet any of these people, it's not very... Sometimes they appear in the lives of devotees <laughs> to harass them. <laughs> Sometimes they appear in dreams and sometimes they appear in, in other ways, you know. But generally they keep to themselves. Yeah, there's a whole category of, of lower living beings. There's a whole, there's seven planetary systems below. If you read the fifth canto, this is where you'll get most of your information about the different lower living beings. Of the seven planetary systems below the earth, it's all described in detail. There's a race of snakes also, race of monkeys, so many different races. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, just to clarify for the 400,000 species of human beings, it's, it's based on consciousness? Is that is that what delineates between? You, usually it's intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, according to one's karma, one gets a particular type of human being. So it's easy to understand. What are the three, what are the three uh, main colors? What are the three primary colors? Oh, you're asking, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought, you were, I thought you were gonna say. Um, is it red and um, primary? Blue, 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 blue. Yellow, blue. Blue, 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 blue. And yellow. Okay, red, blue, and yellow. So how many colors can you make from that? Many, you can make um, purple from red and blue, orange from yellow and red. Um, yeah. If you mix those, those, those yes. I'm asking, I'm asking, to, I'm asking, asking to, how many colors can you make from those three colors? Probably, how many? Number, uh, maybe around. Probably unlimited. It's, it's millions. <laughs> All you have to do is, once you make another color, then you take that color and blend it again, and another color, another color. So you have three modes of material nature, goodness, past, and ignorance, and you have people situated in those three. You blend those modes in different ways, you get different types of living entities. And you keep blending, blending, blending. And these are the karmic, the karmic, um, natures of the different living beings. That's why no two people generally have the same karma. That's why no two people are exactly alike. But even in even within the, the similarities, there's so many differences. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, 8,400,000 species of life. Three modes times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. Keep mixing them, you'll come to 8,400,000 species of life. Same with colors. <laughs> keep mixing it, you keep coming up with more and more colors. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for all of your answers. Thank you It's like I was in, uh, I was in Ireland, and uh, they say, they call it the green country. Mm -hmm. The green country. So I asked how many different shades of green there, and they told me there's, oh, there's more than 40 different shades of green just in the countryside alone. So that's just one color, and that's just a small portion of the, the amount of green. So in the same way, take that same principle. You mix, mix, to mix the modes of material nature, and you get so many different types of living beings. Some very ferocious, demoniac, evil, diabolical. Some very saintly, uh, glorious compassionate. Now, there's such a variety of living beings, mm -hmm. both in categories and in individual qualities also. Mm -hmm. But the variety you see in the material world is just, just a small portion of the variety that exists in the spiritual world. Because in the spiritual world, the varieties are even more, they're unlimitedly Unlimited existing. So sometimes people think, what do we do when we get to the spiritual world? Well, <laughs> there's so much, to, so much to do there because <laughs> it's unlimited. <laughs> and material creation is, is it a third of all creation? Only a third? Uh, the manifested creation is one fourth. Okay. And three fourths is the spiritual existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs>
And we can see it. We, we, we experience ourselves in that way. It's not that we, it's some theo the theoretical idea that, oh, now I'm spiritual. No, you're, you're there. <laughs> Your consciousness is there. You're on the transcendental platform. Because consciousness is by nature spiritual. It's just you you finally got to the point where you rid yourself of everything material in your consciousness. Hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, so don't worry. That's material. <laughs> I worry a lot. <laughs> well, there's transcendental worrying, but that's different than material worrying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Gurudev. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, this is Vrinda here. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, it is mentioned in the translation that uh, superior to human beings are ghosts because they have no material bodies. So I did not understand that. Like Because uh, ghosts are born out of from human beings after they do something less intelligent, right? So how they are superior to human beings? I didn't understand that much. Well, then you should understand the context that is being used in. Superior in the sense that they don't, they don't have a physical body. That's the context. If you change the, if you change the context, then what you say is correct. <laughs> But the context is giving us a different understanding that because they don't have a material body, they are superior in that sense. They're, they exist in the subtle body. Okay. That's the superiority that's being explained, that's all. You see, what, what, what do ghosts do? They enter into the body of others in order to have a material body so they can try to fulfill their material desires. They can't fulfill their material desires without a material body. So they suffer. Mm -hmm. okay. But ghosts harass the human beings. <laughs> They're always harassing, generally. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, is there anybody having any more questions for Maharaj? Hare Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Pranam all goes to Shinapurva. Thank you so much for the beautiful class. I don't have questions. I actually I wanted to ask, but then Mataji asked. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we are going to miss you on Fridays. Um, but anyway, you are coming on Thursday. So that's fine. It'll be, it'll be every other Thursday. Yeah, every other Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I can stay on Friday. But it'll have to be every other Friday. What? I can, I can still do Fridays if you want, but it has to be every other Friday, not every other. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, this time change with my other group is does allows me 
to manage my affairs. I, this time here is very difficult. It's a really difficult time because it throws my whole schedule off. I've been doing it, but it, the adjustment, I cannot continue to adjust anymore. So I need to, I switch my time to four. Um, if you want, I could, I have a suggestion. You can think about this. Um, which is uh, Thursday? No, no I give I can do another suggestion. Um, I could do a, a regular program with the devotees at uh, four o'clock UK time every week. You would have to s organize a separate program and I'd be happy to do it separately once a week but it'd have to be at four o'clock uk time which would be um let's see that would be about 11 o'clock your time i think so 11 a.m in the morning and then i could do it every every week like that and that'll be a special program separate from your regular srimad bhagavatam group but that's up to you. If you want, I can. Otherwise, I'll stay and do this every second week because I have a another group that does it one on Thursday every second week also. So, so maybe you can discuss it. If you want me, I can do a separate program, completely different from the from the morning Bhagavatam class. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy to do this. We, are, we are happy to because you are not giving you are there, you know, even though you are coming, you know, uh, every alternate Thursday, but yeah, we will still have your okay. class. Yeah, thank you. And we'll 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 Thursdays then, if that's, that's fine. Okay, good. I'll miss the group, but uh, it's just impossible for me to manage my affairs with this schedule. <laughs> yeah, we, we want you to take rest and uh, stay healthy. Uh, you know, don't do too much. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not. It's the timings. The timings are not so good, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, once again. Uh, I would like Why to offer go? my office. Yes, Maharaj, please go ahead. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhasya Kripa Sindhu Vedya 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you, 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 Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My obeisances to everyone. And please stay healthy and chant a lot. <laughs> <laughs> e neche e sari maya nasi bada lagi hari nama maha mantra lao tuni magi bhakti vinota kur is glorifying lord chaitanya i've come with the medicine in this age to cure all the disease hari nama maha mantra this is the medicine for as Prabhupada says for all the ills of material existence. Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> more and more. <laughs> and we will always be protected and sheltered by Krishna and happy in our devotional service. 
There's where the mercy is the best. And of course, association with devotees, these two things are endear the, the devotee to Krishna consciousness more and more. So the more you chant, the more you want to associate, and the more you associate, the more you want to chant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bandhu, did you have a nice Guru Puja with your spiritual master? <laughs> yes, it was quite wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, so many uh, amazing, amazing uh, disciples who are doing fantastic service. Amazing. Wonderful. The devotees here in Slovenia also did a special program here. And so we, we got a little glimpse of what they were doing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'll take your leave. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. 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 Thank you,